Okay, today I'm actually going to do kind of a hair tutorial. I want to show you some different tricks on how to achieve a multi-tonal level on, on your hair. So, um, you can do this manually by, by going through highlights and picking your colors and all this. I like to use color swatches because it gives me a more realistic tone. So, I will, I will kind of show you both ways. So, I'm thinking that she's probably... A redhead more of a probably a brassy red and you're gonna have to bear with me on this because like I said I usually <clears throat> don't do it this way I usually do tend to use my hair color swatches because it's just more realistic color to me and I'm not trying to get real perfect here I'm just trying to kind of give you a quick view of how this works and what I'm doing is I'm going ahead and I'm laying a base tone on her hair. And depending upon how bright or dark you want her hair, you can adjust this fade in, you know, to make it extremely bright or not so bright. And I kind of want to fade it in a little. Just leave it there. And then I want to add some blonde tones to her hair to kind of give her some highlights and you have to remember you know it may look funny when you're doing it this is not what it's going to look like when you get done it's kind of like when you turn something you know a different color to help you see it when you're coloring it in before you turn it the actual color it's going to be so now that I've got that, that blonde added in there I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start fading this in. And you see how those highlights are starting to stand out now? That's kind of what we want there. So I will apply that. And then I'm going to give her a little bit of a deeper brass color to kind of make it all blend and not look so rough. This is a lot of the same way that you're doing your skin tones. You'll lay one layer over the other and then fade them and blend them to get them to the right to the right blend mode that you want. And so you can still see those just yellow highlights through there. If we want to, we could actually soften it up so we could pull those yellow out just a little bit more. <clears throat> So this is how I would do it. She just kind of looks like a redhead to me. Um, but you could also do this. Let me see if I can get this to undo all the way. You can also do this with your browns as well. Let me show you right quick with your browns. Just kind of how this works. And like I said, you, you do this with just about everything that you color. It just gives everything kind of a more realistic look. Um, clothes, you don't, I don't generally do this way, but as far as like skin and eyes, lips even, I will lay multiple colors on top of each other and blend them. It, it just helps them look a little more natural. Okay, so I'm going to go... And again, I'm going to do blonde because, you know, those highlights are always going to be a lighter color. And then we're going to turn our fade down. Alright, we're going to apply. 
And like I said, I usually go back and do my darker tones last. It just helps pull those out better. But you can do them really at any time. I've done them both ways. Just kind of, kind of helps to give that multi-tonal level. Nobody is has all one hair color. Everybody has kind of a mixture of hair colors. It may just be one or two. Some people have more than that. You see, you can actually turn it up. But you can still see that blonde through it. You can even darken it some. You can even darken it and you'll still see those highlights. And this kind of gives it right here. I kind of like this one right here. It kind of gives her highlights and low lights. You see these really dark areas in here. Now how many layers you choose to do, that's really entirely up to you. Um, and I'll show you right quick what the color swatches. You're going to go over to your butterfly. You're going to pick your own. I actually have a folder on my desktop that says swatches. And I'm going to look for my hair color chart. And there it is. I'm going to open my hair color chart. I'm going to resize it a lot bigger so I can see it a little better. And I'm going to put this where my hair, I need to size it down a little bit, where my hair is not going to be in the way because it will not allow me to, it can, I can color under, I just won't be able to see it. Now I'm going to go back to my lipstick tool and go back to highlights. I'm going to click on the eyedropper and pick the color I want. My brush size some. Just go over this. I said I'm just doing a quick one here, um, and I'm gonna push. Well, I kind of like that level there. I could actually go up some, but I, I kind of like that in between level there. It's not really brown. It's not really red. And I'll do the same thing. With I'll do the same thing with my blonde. I'm going to pick a color, I like the warmer colors. Let me just go over that. I'm going to fade it in. And then I'll pick my eyedropper tool. Let's go ahead and pick something a little darker. And go over this. Then we can kind of fade it in or out. And kind of like that. I'm going to show you one more. Done um, basically just with the blondes. So what I would do is I'm going to pick kind of a medium color here. That may be a little too dark. I'm actually going to go back down here. That's a good one for blonde. 
Cosmic. It's a little dark. I'm not sure. I haven't played with this one yet to kind of see. Sometimes I'll play with them a little bit first. Do it like this. Apply. Make a highlight. Brush tool. And then I'm going to pick kind of one of these platinum type blondes. We can actually go down here and pick one. Let me, I think I kind of like this one. I'm going to pull our brush size up. And I probably should, it looks like I should have faded that brown a little bit more, used a different color. It's actually going to give her more of a brassy feel. Instead of a blonde. Let's just go ahead and start over. Cancel that, it makes it a little bit easier. And do that. It's going to be hard to get our blonde anyways, just because you can self see from the black and white tonage that she is not a blonde. So it's going to be, let's go ahead and try with this one first. She just wasn't a blonde, more than likely. She probably was a redhead or maybe even a light brunette. But this can be achieved with any, any basically any hair color. See, when we add color to her hair, it automatically turns like a brownish color. So it's going to be hard to get her like a platinum. Let's try this. That may work a little better. Okay. And then we're going to go in and put highlights. And mind you just want to be very careful not to get, they are not yellow. They're, they're blonde. It, blonde is a shade of yellow, but it's not yellow. So just, Make sure you're adjusting your fade to, to give it the right tonage. See, even that's a little better. Apply. And we're going to try this. And a bright over yellow. Because she is just really hard to get a, a blonde, being that she probably wasn't a blonde. And you'll run into that on certain pictures. People ask for certain colors that... <laughs> There's no, almost no way you can get it. There are ways, and I will show you one, but, um, see, and that still looks very yellow to me. But there you go. And I will show you one other thing that I found the other day that I was kind of wanting to share with everybody is when you have places that are blown out with white where it's really, really hard to color, um, Found that if you go here and go to your blush boost and actually choose your color over here, like if you're wanting to overlay it with a pink um, or yellow or, you know, whatever the case is, you can actually put that base layer with your, your blush boost in a different, in a different way that will allow you to color over those blown out areas where you normally, you see how this is going over so easily? Where you wouldn't normally be able to cover. Now let me show you how it would go on over if I do a spray tan just with a brush. You see how it's not even hardly covering down there? And it's because it's so white, it's just having a hard time. There's really nothing for it to grasp onto to color. But see, we can go here, and I can even pick one that's kind of a it's going to be harder to pick one that's a skin tone, but we can pick one that's more close to a skin tone. And I can actually give her a little color.
and that will actually give me something to allow it to grab onto with my spray tan now because there's actually some color here it just it, it allows you to color in places that don't don't usually allow you to take color and I thought that was kind of neat and I wanted to share that with you and if you have any more questions or you'd like to see any more videos just let me know thank you